Hello and welcome to my first command tutorial. Today we will be going over artifacts. We're going to be going through the evolution of my different artifacts as I went through World of Blood, how they improved, and what the advantages and disadvantages to each system are. For World of Blood 1, we had this very simple system right here. Now this right here, this first command block, is probably the very basis of how these work. What this is, is it clears the item. So we're going to be using a diamond today, right? So you'll notice that it's clearing the diamonds. However, it's clearing the ID of zero. So for that, we're just going to ignore that. You usually want that to be zero. But this is the important thing right here. Because right here, we are clearing zero of the item. So it's not actually going to be removing anything from your inventory. However, if it detects that item in your inventory, it's going to put positive out redstone output into a comparator. And since we're using comparator, we have this. You can see this is needs redstone because we want it to only work when it's powered by the comparator. So now, if this is detecting something, that means this will activate, giving us speed. So if I turn this on, I can pick up this diamond. You'll see I have no speed right now. And boom, now I have speed. I can throw it out. I lose it, pick it up, gain it back. So... The reason this system is first is because it's very simple. It's really easy to make. It's two command blocks. The issue is you can't have as complicated of effects. For instance, right here, we're only using speed, but let's say I wanted to give you speed and resistance, then I would have to basically add something like this or this or this or this. Uh, it just makes it a lot more complicated, but this very well works for very simple systems and basically any simple artifacts that are like one command or two commands. So next we have the World of Blood 2 and the World of Blood 3 system. Now this utilizes tags, which kind of fix the main flaw I said this one has. This one utilizes tags. So again, once again, we have the exact same command to start off. Then we're giving ourselves the tag of speed. And that is only happening when this comparator is on, it will give me the tag of speed. As soon as that comparator switches off, this torch will switch on because for those of you who don't know, redstone torches will invert signals. So when this turns off, then it removes the tag speed. So if you look over here, this is the effect command we're using. So as long as I have the tag speed, I will get speed. Pretty simple. So if I turn this on, and pick this up, boom, we get seed, throw it down, we lose it, same as the old ones. Now here's the World of Blood 4 system. This fixes a large flaw I found in the World of Blood 3 and World of Blood 2 system. If you, you don't really need to do this for multiplayer, although I find it's a little bit easier to create, but basically for this system, it prevents when players would get the wrong tag. For instance, if I am on a realm, a lot of people joining and rejoining, there is a chance that somebody will accidentally get an artifact that they don't really have, or an artifact that's actually in their inventory won't be counted by the game. This system fixes that because it constantly checks to see, do you still have that item? Do you still have that item? And if you don't, it'll remove it. So the way this works is we're actually not using the, first, the same starting commands. We are actually going to be removing the tag as the very first thing. And this removes it from everybody in the game. Then we'll be checking, does the player have that item? Then we have a conditional command. And the reason this is conditional, and you can see this always acts as conditional. The reason this is conditional is that means it'll only activate if this command is true. It's the same thing as if it produced an out output from the redstone comparator. This will only activate if the previous one was true. So this adds speed. Now you can see here, whoops, we turn this on, I get the item, and I have speed. I drop it, same as the others, and I lose it. Now all of these systems right here, these three that I just showed you, all of them only work for single player. Now you can make these systems work in multiplayer, it's just a little harder. It takes a little more time. So what we have here is we have a multiplayer counter. I'm going to even turn it on. So this is using scoreboards. So you do need to have some understanding of how scoreboards work in order to understand how to make these multiplayer friendly. So as you can see on the side of the screen, it shows my score. Whoops. 
I can't do that. It shows my score, which is just one. The reason that is, is we have first we have a test for at a command that's testing for all the players in the world. Now you can see that this one, this redstone dust is lit up and the others are not. Now, if I were to have two players in the world, then I would have two lit up. If I were to have three, I would have three lit up. You get the idea. So you notice that we have observers checking whether or not these redstone signals are updating. The first one, and you notice this one is not repeated. This one removes the objective. The reason that we do this is that everyone is cleared. Everyone starts their score back at zero and it removes offline players from the counter. Now, if we look in the top one, this one just simply adds the scoreboard back into existence. So that way we can use it. This is where it gets really important. And this is where there's a couple different options, depending on how you're going to play when you're making these artifacts. The first one here, scoreboard players add at a C equals one. That means it will only add to the closest player one score. And the next one, this is the same thing, except it only adds to the closest two players. This adds to the closest three, adds to the closest four, and I think you kind of get the pattern. So basically what this does is everyone will get a different score. And I'm logging in my phone account so you can see what that looks like. Once it fully loads in, you'll see that the score gets updated, that he will be put to score two, or one of us will be on score two, one of us will be on score one, and I'll show why that's important in a second over here. But there's just some important things to note. Depending on how many people you plan to have in your world is really gonna depend on how much of this you need to make. Because it's not the most fun, it's a little bit tedious. So there's no need to make more than you have to. If you're working on mobile, I believe the max for your world is five. So you would only need to have five of these modules. If you are playing on Xbox, I believe that max world is eight per player. And if you're using realms, I believe the max is 10. Now, if you are on an Xbox world and you can make eight, but you think I'm only gonna have three plans playing this at a time, then you only need to make three. Only bother making as much as you need. Because not only will you have to make more here, you'll have to make more for each artifact. So this system right here, this tiny little area, you only ever need to make this once for your entire world and you will never have to make it again. This system over here, you will have to make every single artifact. So we have the same thing here. I'm gonna turn this display off. I'm gonna leave on my other account. This system over here, is how I make these multiplayer friendly. And one thing to mention, when a player leaves, you won't be set back to one, you usually be set back to two if you're the last person playing. That does not matter, it's not gonna hurt you. All right, so now that we're back to here, this is the same system that we used over here. It's gonna use the same pattern, but slightly different. So the first one is we remove speed from everyone, that's exactly the same. The second one that we're gonna do is we're going to only clear from the player who has the score equal to one. Then if that is true, we're only gonna give the tag to the player who has score equal to one. And then we repeat this. So this one clears from the player who has score equal to. This one gives the tag to whoever has score equal to. Score equals three, score equals three. And you can make your own scoreboard. It doesn't have to be called score but you get the idea. And basically you will need to repeat this as many times. So I have a four player system set up in this. Let's say I want to have five people, then each artifact is gonna to need to look like this. If I have six and you get the point, it's gonna to have to repeat as many times as you need it. So yes, the more players you have or plan to have, it will be longer and it will take up more space. If you plan to have multiple artifacts, these can cause lag. So one thing I recommend doing is going in here and you can put a delay in ticks. So if I were to put in 60 ticks, that means this command only activates every three seconds because a tick is 1 20th of a second. So 60 means every three seconds. So this does mean if I have this on a tick, there will be more delay between when I get my effect, as you can see that big delay and when I lose it from throwing it out. However, this is only going to be a couple of seconds and it's only going to happen when they're 
dropping or picking up the item. And if you're getting a lot of lag, it is generally kind of necessary to do this. And yeah.